can't do this. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. God is good. All the time. If anything is excellent in any thought, any, if any thought is admirable, if any course of action is holy and pure, righteous and true, focus your mind on these things that God will bring you peace. Would you stand and join me in a call to worship? Rejoice in God always. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in God's saving word. Rejoice in God's healing presence. The gospel reading this morning is from Matthew 22, 1 through 14. It's on page 24 in your pew Bibles. And I will be reading from the word. Jesus told them several other stories to illustrate the kingdom. He said, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a king who prepared a great wedding feast for his son. Many guests were invited, and when the banquet was ready, he sent his servants to notify everyone that it was time to come. But they all refused. So he sent other ser servants to tell them, the feast has been prepared, and choice meats have been cooked. Everything is ready. Hurry. But the guests he had invited ignored them and went about their business one to his farm, another to his store. Others seized his messengers and treated them shamefully, even killing some of them. Then the king became furious. He sent out his army to destroy the murderers and burn their city. And he said to his servant, the wedding feast is ready, and the guests I invited aren't worthy of the honor. Now go into the street corners and invite everyone you see. So the servants brought in everyone they could find, good and bad alike, and the banquet hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in and met the guests, he announced he noticed a man who wasn't wearing the proper clothes for a wedding. Friend, he asked, how is it that you are here without wedding clothes? And the man had no reply. Then the king said to his aides, bind him hand and foot and throw him out into the outer darkness, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. This is the word of God. Holy God, we come into your midst with praise on our lips and songs of joy in our hearts. We come to stand firm in our conviction that good is stronger than evil, that love is stronger than hate, that truth will ultimately win the day. Keep our hearts focused on things that are worthy of praise and bless us with your peace, a peace that passes all understanding. Keep our minds grounded in Christ Jesus that we may know the joy of your justice and your righteousness. Amen. Hey, what are you doing? Just thinking. Ooh, and don't strain out any of your stuffing. <laughs> it's funny. No, I was wondering why we go to church. I mean, because when I am outside, I can worship God and praise God. Yes, and it's good to worship God and praise Him outside as well. Yeah, yay. I just feel so close outside. Well, see if you can't take some of the things you learned about worship back to church with you. 
Like what? I don't know what you mean. When you worship God out here, you start by tuning in your ears. They listen to the birds, the water, the wind. Then you start listening for God. Hey, that's exactly what happens. You also get really quiet and shut out all distractions and concentrate on God. Sometimes that's hard to do in church. Yes, that's why we should be careful not to be distractions in church even before the service starts. Because some people might be listening to God. Yes, and they might be quieting themselves so they can worship God. Hey, I wouldn't want to disturb someone who is doing that because it feels so good to worship. Yeah, but you know this morning, I was listening and felt so good on and loved God so much, I just busted out singing, Oh, how I love Jesus. That's great. Sometimes our worship is very joyous when we sing from our hearts. Can we sing like that in church? Oh yeah. When you sing in church, listen to the words. See what they mean to you, and then sing them to God. You know, sometimes I don't feel good when I come to church, because something happened. You mean like when things aren't going great and you're having problems? Yes. Should I just stay home? Oh no, don't do that. That's one of the most important times to come. What do you mean? I don't understand. Well, when we put God in the center of our lives, we are worshiping Him. Whether we feel good or bad, if we are listening to Him, trusting in Him, and depending on Him, we are worshiping Him. And when things aren't going great, we need to really be listening for what he has to say. Hmm. But how can we do that? We listen for what God has to say during the singing time, during the prayer time, and during the sermon time. Listen and let God teach you. He can help you during the good times and the bad times. Oh, that sounds like a plan. You know, when we go to church, we meet with our brothers and sisters in Christ, and sometimes they have been through similar problems. They can share with us how God helped them and encourage us and pray for us. Oh, wow. That would really be a big help. Kind of like allies in a battle, huh? Oh, uh, what? You know... Friends come to help you fight the devil. Oh, yeah. We're fighting the devil together. It makes me feel stronger knowing I have this much help fighting the devil. We are stronger when we come together to worship God and encourage each other. <laughs> we are stronger when we come together to worship God and encourage each other. You. That is, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we're sitting the devil together. It makes me feel stronger yeah. knowing yeah. I have this much help fighting the devil. There we, okay. go. we are stronger when we come together to worship God and encourage each other. Oh, yes, we are. Okay, I'm going to sit back and listen to God for the rest of the service. Maybe he will help me with something I have been wondering about. I'm sure that he will. You know that you can always talk to your Sunday school teacher or to Pastor Barry as well when you have a problem. I didn't think about that. Okay, Kenny, for telling me that. Oh, thanks, Kenny. <laughs> Not a problem, Amy. Shall we pray? <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this church and for Pastor Barry and our Sunday school teachers, we especially thank you for teaching us how to pray to you 
and for teaching us how to listen for your small, still voice. Be with us as we continue to learn about you this day and the next. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming, children. Bye. Bye. Our Old Testament reading today is in your uh, hymnal on page 829. There will be a musical response. You guys will need your hymnals. On page 829, it's Psalm 106, 1 through 12, and then 19 through 23, and 47 through 48. Praise the Lord. Who can utter the mighty doings of the Lord? or show forth all God's praise. Remember me, O Lord, when you show favor to your people. Help me when you deliver them. Now 19 through 48. They made a calf in Horeb and worshipped a motion, a molten image. They forgot God, their Savior, who had done great things in Egypt. Therefore, the Lord intended to destroy him and destroy them, had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach to turn away God's wrath from destroying them. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. And let all people say, Lord, Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise be to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. <laughs> As some of you guys um, are realizing, this is not a usual service today. Today is Laity Sunday, and we would like to honor Pastor Barry and let him have a day off and let the laity, which are all of you, do the service. And this part never gets filled in. I wonder why. Would you please pray with me? As we listen for the word of God, let us focus our hearts and minds on whatever is honorable and true, just and pure, pleasing and commendable, excellent and worthy of praise. Amen. Whoa, that could have been a disaster. <laughs> I don't know if any of you read your um, readings that are in your bulletins for the f next week. I don't know if you read them ahead or not. But one of the readings, scriptures this week, um, was Philippians chapter 4. Um, and I can't remember what the, uh, <laughs> what the verses were. Thank you. I knew that's what it was. Yeah. So anyway, I'm going to read that for you. And yes, I do not know how to pronounce the one lady's name. So, therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, that is how you stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I plead with Yudosha and I plead with Syntech to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, your loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, 
along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be ev evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true and whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things that you have learned or have received or heard it from me or seen in me. Put it into practice and the God of peace will always be with you. All of the readings in this week's lectionary have us thinking about anger. God's and our own. In Exodus, Moses has to talk down an irrational Yahweh. In Matthew's parable of the wedding banquet, an equally unreasonable host, king, which was God, responds in an unwilling disproportionate ways of what really amounts to social snubbing and an ill-dressed party guest. Now, I'm sure I'm not the only one that's had to turn down an invitation to something. Sometimes health or injuries or family. Sometimes we don't have the right clothes to wear. I know I'm the first one probably that says when they say, oh, come on, let's do this. What do I got to wear? Anyway, I'm sure I'm not the only one. Sometimes there's sorrow. Sometimes there's a whole lot of other reasons that we decline invitations. In the gospel lesson, the king invites all of those that had great importance but they have too many other things going on with their lives, so they just say, nope, sorry, can't do it. So the next invitation goes out to those that were not chosen first, you know, the common ones, the workers, the impoverished. I'm sure that the king would have been pleased if some of the first invited ones had attended, but the king wasn't going to reserve a seat for them. If there was any room left over, they could still come in. Now, it would be easy for us to jump to conclusions with, when you compare with the Pharisees, who would have likely been above, among sorry, the first invited because of their status and influence. I believe the comparison can go further, or perhaps closer to us, there are so many ways that God invites us to celebrate and then to serve. But it is easy for us to get sidetracked. Needing to work on Sunday can also be a block to attending a celebration or having family responsibilities, even if there are sports or other social events that can always get in the way. What do we gain by accepting God and God's invitation to the banquet? And what have we lost? Are we healed or strengthened, given courage or inspired, or challenged by declining God's invitation? We still maintain that the demands on living in today's day and age determine our responses. There could be a reason. But isn't it wonderful that God does not use excuses to exclude us? God never declines our prayers. He might answer them a different way from what we want, but he doesn't decline our prayers. Even though our impatience tells us that we want an answer, we've got it right now. God does answer. 
We just have to listen. Sandwiched in between the two troubling texts is Psalm 106, which functions between the two of them. And then we have the lesson from the Philippians, which, when we read it, makes us realize just how angry we really are at politics, at the village, at the town, at our spouse, at a co-worker, even ourselves. Take your pick. Pick a target, any one of them. Paul's cheery command to rejoice in the Lord always seems to be a little trite and naive, kind of like as if it were a Hallmark greeting card. The Old Testament and the Gospel lessons especially remind us of a really simple truth. When we need to read the Bible carefully, and when we honor its complex history in the social world, which is so very different from our own. We should practice deep humility, recognizing that all of our reading and all of our attempts of figuring out the meanings are only partial and they're incomplete. We know well enough that the words on the what the words on the pages say, but what in the world do they mean? I read several of them and were like, eh, nope. <laughs> The psalm this week reminds us that in the midst of everything, a God who rages, people who betray, the proper response is always worship. In thanksgiving, lament, confession, and rejoicing, the mystery of God's anger, just like the mystery of God's love, can never fully be comprehended it can only be entered into. Who can utter the mighty doings of the Lord, the psalmist asked, or declare all of his praise? We don't always get our heads on straight all of the, in, on straight and all of the ways of God and then offer our praise and thanksgiving. God is, and we worship, and the mystery still remains. Paul asks us to stand firm, for the crown or the victory will someday be ours. At this point, Paul remembered something that had happened to specific people that there had been a disagreement between them. More than that, we really don't know anything about the two ladies. They only that they quarreled. What a terrible thought, to only be remembered by this alone. Paul encouraged them to agree in the Lord. When we realize that our common bond in Christ, we have reconciliation, will not be far away. But sometimes we need the help of a third party to help us along the way. Like what the puppet said, there's always somebody here to talk to to help you out. There is nothing sadder than when Christians fall out with each other, and even sadder still when people have died and there still has not been peace between them. Don't worry about anything. Wow, if only I could learn this lesson. It has so consumed so much of my life. But Paul continues to explain and suggests that true prayer and anxiety cannot or should not coexist. The way to be truly anxious about nothing is to pray about everything. And when we pray and make our own requests known to God, we should always add thanksgiving. If we do this, Paul promises us that we will know God's true and rich peace. Paul promises us that the peace of God which passes all understanding, something that is beyond human comprehension, will keep. The paragraph that began with joy and ends with peace. Is Paul saying that if we don't have God's peace in our hearts, that we cannot have his song on our lips? 
keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will always be with you. St. Francis of Assisi is said to have said, preach the gospel everywhere, and only when necessary, use words. <coughs> Nothing can be more attractive than a holy and pure life, not a holier-than-thou life, though. We've all met judgmental people who think that they have all of the answers and who are always critical of others. Nothing can be more off-putting. But we also have the privilege of meeting people whose lives are filled with joy of the Lord, those who rejoice. What a characteristic of life of love is gentleness, prayerful living in peace, even in the midst of terrible things. Paul exhorts to us today to live this way, and then we will know God's peace and fulfillment, and we will attract others to become disciples of Jesus. And he also gives us a very practical way of doing this, and that is to prayerfully fill our minds with whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable, excellent, and worthy of praise. Is this characteristic of what we watch on TV, watch in a movie, Is that characteristic, what we look at on the internet, the books we read, the music we listen to, or what we study? If we seek to live in this way and with God's grace and with the aid of the Holy Spirit, none of it can we can none of this can we ever achieve on our own. We all know that we can live with what Paul says in verse 7, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please pray with me. Bathe us in your compassion and love, Holy One. Clothe us in your justice and righteousness. Dress us in your mercy and grace that our hearts and minds may be kept safe in Christ Jesus and that we may find peace. Amen. God of steadfast love, your bounty knows no bounds. For the abundant gifts in our lives, we thank you. For the peace that passes all understanding, we praise you. For the keeping of our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, we honor you. Receive the gifts we bring you this day, and help us stay focused on things that are excellent and admirable, holy and just, righteous and pure. Amen. I'd like to take a couple minutes and um, honor this gentleman right here. If you want to... Well, yeah, you can sit for this second. Pastor Perry, would you stand up, please? <laughs> yes, Jane. <laughs> um, at this time, I would like to do a pa place a blessing on Pastor Barry. If anybody else would like to come up and lay hands on him, or from your seat, you can just raise your hand like this towards Pastor Barry, whichever way you would like to do. Lay hands on gently, he says. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going straight. <laughs> I will not. Don't go too far. I can't get over there. <laughs> Mr. Barry, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you with the promises of God, which are yea and amen. The Holy Spirit make you healthy and strong in body, mind, and spirit to move in faith and expectancy, 
May God's angels be with you to protect and keep you. Be blessed with supernatural strength to turn your eyes from foolish and worthless and evil things. Instead, may you behold the beauty of things that God has planned for you as you obey his words. I bless your ears to hear the lovely, the uplifting, and the encouraging, and to shut out the demeaning and the negative. May your feet walk in holiness and your strength be ordered by the Lord. May your hands be tender, helping hands to those in need. May your heart be humble and receptive to one another and to the face of God and not to the world. May your mind be strong and disciplined, balanced and faith-filled. God's grace be upon your home. May it be a sanctuary of rest and renewal, a haven of peace where the sounds of joy and laughter grace its walls, where love and unconditional acceptance of one another is constant. God give you spiritual strength to overcome the evil one and avoid temptation. God's grace be upon you to fulfill your dreams and visions. May goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your long life. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. As we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the benediction. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus from this day forward and forevermore. Amen.